Midoriya continues his great escape, Class 1A put their foot down and go full throttle, and an iconic moment from the past is recreated, but with a twist. Let's talk about all of this and more as we dive right into the newest chapter of My Hero Academia. So My Hero Academia Chapter 3, 2, 1 is finally out, and with it we get the continuation of Class 1A's magnificent manhunt for the muscle-bound maniacal monster main man of the series, Izuku Midoriya. When you think about it, this whole fight is just My Hero's version of the Sasuke retrieval arc, and I love it. You bring that boy home, 1A, and then unleash Mama Midoriya on his ass, and then we'll really see who's the strongest in this world. In this chapter, the remaining members of Class 1A confront Midoriya, 1A pulls out even more new super moves, and Midoriya is forced to come face to face with his best friend. But before I begin talking about this chapter, I'm first going to go into a quick summary of what happened last time. And as usual, don't forget to Detroit smash that like button and slide into that subscribe button's DMs to hit that notification bell. In the last chapter, the entirety of Class 1A arrived at Kamino Ward to confront Midoriya for leaving them unseen. But just like a degenerate father on a cigarette or milk run, Midoriya said, I'm Audi, and he popped a smoke screen and tried to bounce. Before he could get away, however, best boy Bakugo countered the smoke screen with an explosion, and he called out Midoriya, telling him he's starting to turn into season one Bakugo. Ooh, now that's one of the lowest insults in the entirety of the My Hero fandom. Second only to, you're just as good as a dad as Endeavor. After Midoriya's smoke screen was hard countered, GGEZ, Koda, Sero, Jiro, Ojiro, and Sato each attempted to restrain our green haired protagonist while reminding him of how much he means to each of them. But Midoriya, like an old war vet on the 4th of July, is still suffering from PTSD from the paranormal war, and he dismisses each of his friend's pleas and continues to run away. Realizing the sea listers and Jiro aren't enough, 1A sends in the artillery. As Dark Shadow slams Midoriya into a building, Momoya Yorozu ties him to some sort of sexual restrainment torture device, Kaminari gives him a hug for some reason, and Shoji gives him a super hug. With Deku temporarily restrained, once again, his friends try to convince him to stay. Unsurprisingly, this doesn't get true to the boy who's in dire need of a bat. And Izuku, just like a peacock who's gotta fly, I'll heart any comment who gets that reference, breaks free from all of his restraints and launches himself through the air. In the midst of flying through the skies, a now emotional Midoriya crashes right into Todoroki's ice wall. And chapter 320 ended with Midoriya wedged in a wall of ice with Todoroki standing atop asking him, you gonna cry? While Froppy clung onto a nearby building claiming that 1A will stick with Midoriya no matter what. And this is where chapter 321 picks up. This chapter opens up with Kirishima, Hagakure, and Aoyama, Hardman and Visigirl and Mr. Sparkles, delivering the unconscious dictator to Endeavor, who has just arrived onto the scene in his car. Endeavor informs the young heroes that dictator might not be alone, and he asks the three students to go help Hawks and the other pros in keeping the nearby civilians safe. However, Hawk says that it would probably be more efficient to just leave it all to Genist. And hearing this, Kirishima tells Endeavor that he might not have a flashy quirk like all the others, and that his help may not be needed, but he still has a lot of things he wants to say to Midoriya. And he runs off alongside Aoyama and Hagakure, who are in agreement with this, to help the heroes any way they can. Recognizing Kirishima's determination and willingness to help, Endeavor informs Hawks that as of now, the students should no longer be viewed as a hindrance. Kirishima, earning the respect of even the number one hero. The story then cuts back to the main event of this chapter, Class 1A versus Deku, and it picks up right where we left off. Todoroki, standing atop his Goliath ice wall, shouts down to Midoriya, who is embedded within, that them all fighting could actually all be a part of All For One's plan, and he could be using this time to attack UA. Todoroki continues, saying that if they have already searched extensively for All For One to no avail, then they should consider an alternative plan of action. Preferably one where instead of Midoriya leaving UA, he can stay by its side to help protect it. And Shoto finishes his speech by screaming at Midoriya, let us fight with you. Unfortunately, even after hearing this valid reason for him to return, Midoriya still refuses, as the images of Shigaraki, Nanashimura, and All Might flash through his mind, with the words, you're next, being repeated in his head over 
and over again. Now filled with an unbridled rage, Deku manages to break free of his ice imprisonment. And with the look of a man who is on the absolute verge of losing his mind, he screeches out, this is a fight between one for all and all for one. You guys can't keep up. To quote everyone's favorite bloodthirsty kinky queen, damn Izuku. As Midoriya explodes out of and destroys Shoto's ice wall, Ida calls for Uraraka, Todoroki attempts to regain his balance, Bakugo prepares himself and Froppy leaps towards Izuku and tries to capture him with her tongue. Deku dodges Froppy's attempt with ease, but as it turns out, this is what they had expected, as she was actually using her tongue to hold on to Mineta, who she has now catapulted towards Midoriya. Mineta now flying at high speeds, uses a chain of his pop-off balls, god that always sounds so sexual, to grab onto Deku's back. While he does this, Mineta exclaims that he never thought one for all was that cool or unique. What really made him admire Deku was his ability to win together with everyone, even while trembling in fear and covered in sweat. As Mineta says all of this, there is also a quick flashback of Froppy, Izuku and Mineta working together during the USJ attack. Ah. Now that brings me back. Also, I want to point out that Mineta telling Deku that he didn't care about his power but admired him because of who he was is honestly really heartfelt and is actually one of the nicest things anyone has ever said to Midoriya, like, ever. And what makes it even more endearing is the fact that it's coming from Mineta, someone who always speaks his mind, whether people like it or not, so you know it's absolutely genuine. Man, Horikoshi writes his characters well. Although this heartfelt plea still doesn't get true to the monstrous phenom, as Izuku apologizes to Mineta, knocks him backwards using his Black Whip, and shoots two more Black Whip energy tendrils to nearby buildings, setting himself up to use pseudo 100% one for all to escape. I know it's officially called full 100%, but pseudo just sounds so much better in my opinion. Before Deku can catapult himself away, however, Uraraka floats down from above, shouting that she won't let him run away. She calls out to him saying, Deku, it's not the same as before. But before she can continue, Midoriya unleashes his full power and rockets past her. Now I do want to point out that as soon as Uraraka began to talk, Deku looked like he was suffering from a lot of pain. And the more she talked, the more pain it looked like he suffered from. So Midoriya blasting past Uraraka mid-sentence wasn't a sign of him not caring about her or not respecting her but it was a sign that he cares for her too much. And he knew if she kept talking, she would inevitably convince him to stay. At least that's how I interpreted this moment. Who knows, he might not give a single fuck about her. But anyway, as Deku absolutely yeets himself into the sky, and I mean absolutely yeets himself way out of everyone's reach, Uraraka calls out to the others. And we see that Todoroki has set up a giant ice ramp identical to the one he made for Kirishima, Deku and Ida to save Bakugo with during the rest. Rescue arc. And that's right, ladies and gents, Class 1A's going to the moon. At the bottom of the hill, Mina Ashido uses her super move Acid Man at 0.1% solubility to create the perfect frictionless platform for the launch team to grab onto. Bakugo and Todoroki grab onto the platform, and Koda, Shoji Sato, and Tokoyami all use their quirks to launch the two heroes up the ramp. Once these four have done all they can, Todoroki uses his ultimate move Flash Freeze Heat Wave, the move he used against Mid Midoriya in the sports festival to give Bakugo an extra super boost, rocketing him upwards. As Bakugo begins to soar upwards, he passes a floating Uraraka who gives him and the acid platform a quick tap on the ass for good luck, and to activate her quirk Zero Gravity, giving him a little extra oomph on the way up. But even with all of this amazing firepower, it still doesn't give Bakugo the momentum he needs. So he points his arms backwards and unleashes his new super move, Explosive Speed. Speed Turbo Cluster, in which he unleashes a massive cluster of explosions behind him, propelling himself even faster, allowing him to travel at an ungodly speed. NASA eat your heart out, this is the real space crew. As Bakugo is making his way towards Midoriya, Uraraka thinks to herself how she and all of the others have a lot to say to Midoriya, but they know their words won't reach him. However, they want to make it clear to him that they don't want to be protected and are not 
trying to deny his ways. They just want to be by his side. After Uraraka's narration, we then cut to Bakugo, who is thinking to himself that there is so many things he wants to, no, needs to say to Deku. But he just can't handle the speed at which Midoriya is traveling. And as Bakugo points his gauntlets at the acid platform and gives it one last boost upwards, he claims that the only person who can withstand this speed other than Midoriya is their class representative, Tenya Ida, revealing that Ida was inside the acid platform all along. And thanks to the help from all of his friends, he is now on a direct collision course with Deku. God. Damn, I did not see that coming at all. I mean, they just straight up deadpooled Ida into the upper atmosphere. But I have to say, I really like this twist. I was 100% expecting Bakugo to be the one to reach out his hand to Midoriya to bring him home. And they set it up perfectly as if he was going to. But when you think about it, Ida doing it makes so much more sense because he is the only one who knows exactly how Midoriya is feeling. During the Stain arc, Ida saw a loved one one get hurt, had a title and will of another trust upon him, and was driven mad trying to live up to that title. Midoriya saw a bunch of his loved ones get hurt during the war, had the wills of the previous one for all wielders trust upon him, and has been driven mad over trying to live up to being the one person who can stop all for one. Midoriya's current character arc is an almost exact parallel to Ida's way back when, so it would only be fitting for Ida to be the one to bring back the person who brought back him in his time of need. TLDR, Midoriya saved AWOL Ida, and now Ida is saving AWOL Midoriya. But anyway, as Ida launches towards Midoriya, he uses his engines to maneuver around the escaping hero, and he grabs onto Midoriya's hand. As Ida grabs his best friend's hand, he exclaims that Midoriya was always ahead of him, and that's why he will always continue to challenge Midoriya, matching his will and matching his pace. Following this, we get the full shot of Midoriya and Ida's clasping hands, which is a direct parallel to the second user of One For All reaching out his hand to the first user of One For All, as we finally learn what the second user was going to say in Chapter 318. He says, if there is anyone who can bolster Izuku Midoriya right now, it would be the people who could run alongside him. And Chapter 321 comes to an end with Ida and Midoriya both with eyes full of tears as Ida proclaims that Ingenium is a hero who will run anywhere to grab the hand of a lost child. And he utters the very words Midoriya once told the hero killer Stain. Meddling where you don't need to is the essence of being a hero. Overall, this was another fantastic chapter. Some more members of Class 1A got their moment to shine, and the plot twist at the end with Ida being the one to confront Midoriya was amazing. I also absolutely love the giant team up catapult maneuver they pulled off to get Ida into the air. It was a nice way of showing us just how far everyone has come from the Bakugo rescue mission days. There was also some great little character moments as well, like at the start of the chapter when Midoriya tells Todoroki that they can't keep up. And then when Todoroki launches Bakugo and Ida into the air, he comments, so we can't keep up, huh? I will say, seeing all of Class 1A's biggest guns having to go plus ultra just to compete with Midoriya's pseudo 100% really puts into perspective how devastatingly powerful powerful 100% of One For All really is. Like, it took nine members of the class using their powers in perfect unison just to get one person to match Midoriya's speed. That's insane. Now, I can see a few gripes people will have with this chapter. One, being Uraraka not doing very much again, and two, having characters like Kirishima sitting on the sidelines. They're both kind of bummers, but hey, I can live with it. It's gonna be really interesting to see what happens happens next, and I'm curious what's going to happen with Stain now that Ida has had a true hero moment. Will he accept Ida as a true hero, or will he still condemn him for his actions? But let me know what you think of this chapter. If you like this video, don't forget to leave a like and comment what you think is going to happen next. For more My Hero content, subscribe to the Lunchtime Crew. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video, plus ultra.